Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Break and welcome to another pickups video. I know I did one not that long ago from Play Expo Blackpool, but since then I've been to two more events. I've been to the London Gaming Market and I've been to MCM Comic Con in Birmingham and I picked up some great things from both the shows as well as a few pre-orders that I was really excited to get. So let's begin with the London Gaming Market stuff because that was only a few days ago and it's still fresh in my mind. And quite possibly the most exciting thing I got from there was this, which is Final Fantasy II Special Edition for the Wonderswan. And as you can see in there, yes, it's got the Wonderswan console. It has a special version of Final Fantasy II for the system. And something else really cool that I was not expecting, if we open up the box, there was actually a Final Fantasy necklace in there as well. So that's a really nice little addition to the package. And in case you're wondering, that is what a Wonderswan console looks like. It's a really nice little system and I am planning on doing a video on it in the future and that's what the cartridges look like. Kind of like GBA carts but the pins at the bottom are actually exposed which maybe isn't the best design choice but it is what it is and when you slot them in the system they actually go inside it like that which is pretty cool. And the games themselves are kind of somewhere in between the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance so it's a really interesting system and like I said, I don't want to get into too much detail now because I'm going to do a full video on the system in the future, so stay tuned for that. And as well as that, I picked up two other games for the Wonder Swan while I was at the show. We have the original Final Fantasy to go alongside Final Fantasy 2, so that's really nice to have. Again, I'll show you briefly what the cartridge looks like. And these all came with the instruction manuals as well, so there's the cartridge for Final Fantasy 1 for the Wonder Swan. Looks really nice, really classic design. And the final Wonderswan game we've got here is Inuyasha, which is a really great anime, so I was really curious to see what this game's like. Of course it's all in Japanese, so there probably isn't much of a way of me actually playing very much of this game, but it's still really cool to have. And Inuyasha kind of ties into a future video series that I'm thinking of doing as well, so I kind of picked it up for that reason too. Now for two really cool little collectible GBA games that I found on the same stall. These are two of the Famicom Mini Collection games, one for Super Mario 1 and one for Super Mario 2, also known as the Lost Levels outside of Japan. So basically what these are, these are the Famicom games but on GBA cartridges. But the thing I like most about them, honestly, is the really nice packaging that they come in. So here's what the little box looks like and here's what the cartridge inside there looks like as well. The box and the cartridge for number two were a bit different. This one features a vertical box instead of a horizontal one and the cartridge for that one is just plain yellow with some Japanese text in the middle but both of them play pretty much exactly the same as the Famicom. Now next is two Game Boy Color games that I got from my friend Quang and he did me a great deal on both of these and I was just really happy to see him again as well so let's start with the first one which I haven't had a chance to play yet but I remember reading about this one a lot back in the day this is called Rhino Rumble for the Game Boy Color. Looks like a really fun side-scrolling platformer and it did get kind of good reviews back in the day as well, so I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. And a game that I have played, I played this one on the train on the way back from London. This one is Extreme Sports by Way Forward, which is kind of a, a mini game collection with different sports included. It's got really nice graphics and all of the sports are really fun mini games as well. So really enjoyed playing this one and I'm sure I'll go back and play more of it too. And speaking of Quang, there was one other thing he did for me as well while I was there. So. If you remember a while ago, I did a review of this game here called Jetpack DX. Well, it was a great game, but for some reason, it didn't work in the analog pocket. Let me show you what happened. So whenever I would try and play the game in the analog pocket, I would just get this white screen, and I would also get the same issue if I tried playing it on the computer as well, using the cartridge. So he very kindly did me another cartridge, which does play on here, but he forgot to include the startup screen that says thank you to Nick Retro Break in brackets. So what I did was I got the ROM off him and I used my cartridge flasher to flash the new cartridge which does play on there. So now I've got my personal copy of Jetpack DX on the analog pocket itself. So I'm really happy about that. Thank you so much Quang and I'm really glad that it did actually work in the end as well. Two PS2 games now that I picked up from the event and both are Sonic games. So we got Sonic Unleashed for the PS2 and we have Sonic Mega Collection Plus. Mega Collection Plus includes a few extras that weren't present on the GameCube version, but unfortunately it can only run at a maximum of 50Hz instead of 60 like the GameCube one, 
So the games do actually play a little bit slower than what they do on the GameCube. So although it has a few extra games, it's really not the ideal way to play this collection. And Sonic Unleashed is an interesting one. This is actually based on the Wii game, which was completely different to the PS3 and Xbox 360 game. It's slightly downgraded from the Wii game. I think there's a few dithering issues with the graphics and the frame rate isn't quite as good. But the game's still quite fun. I did have fun playing through it the other night. And now for some games for the Mega Drive. And I've been loving collecting Mega Drive games recently since I got my modded system, which I did a video on a few weeks ago. So the first one I've got here for the Mega Drive is Atomic Runner. And I played this on the Mega Drive Mini 2 and I thought it was a really interesting game, but it takes a lot of getting used to. I really couldn't get used to the controls at first, but eventually it clicked and I really started to enjoy it. So really glad to now have a physical copy of Atomic Runner to go along with it on the Mega Drive Mini 2 as well. And if you want to know more about the Mega Drive Mini 2, I did actually do a review on that last week as well. So subscribe, check in my videos over on my channel and go and watch that one after this. Another Mega Drive game I got, and I'm not so impressed with this one, this is Marble Madness. I'm a big fan of the game on the NES, but this one really isn't the improvement that I thought it was going to be, especially in the music department. My god, the music in this game is horrendous. Just listen to this. Now for a game that's horrendous in a different way. This is Zero Wing. And yeah, this game is kind of a meme, when it comes to the intro at least, but the game itself is actually a really fun horizontal scrolling shooter. And I'm really glad to have this because I did used to play it on emulators a lot back in the day. And finally, a game that I wanted for my Quintet collection because this was a game that came out from Falcom and some of the developers that went on to form Quintet actually worked on the PC version of this game. This is Sorcerian for the Mega Drive. I actually got this one really cheap and it is complete too. Of course, it's an RPG and it's all in Japanese, so I probably won't actually be able to play it and get very far, but it's definitely really something cool to add to my collection. And something for my upcoming quintet video which I'm still working on in the background. One day it won't come out, I promise. That's everything I got at the London Gaming Market, but there's a load of other really cool stuff that I've got recently too. The next three things I picked up from MCM London, they are Metal Slug X for the PlayStation 1. I love the Metal Slug series and it's great to own a PS1 version of the game because I don't have any of them on the PS1. And this is a great game as well. It does play a little bit slowly thanks to our PAL system, but it doesn't stop it being really enjoyable. I definitely had a blast playing through this one when I got back from London a few weeks ago. And the other two games I haven't played yet, so the first one is Zillion 2, and I couldn't actually get this one to work on the Master System, so let me know in the comments if you know anything about Zillion 2. Is it worth trying to get working? Should I bother downloading a ROM for it? And the next one I haven't even taken out of its plastic wrapper yet. This is the NES game, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, because we're in the UK. A great game, I'm sure a lot of people already know about that one, but I just haven't had a chance to play it yet. Now for some other really interesting things. So recently I did a video about the modded EverDrive which is behind me, but at the same time I'd also picked up this, which is the Mega EverDrive X5. And I'm planning on having a look at some of the homebrew and some of the ROM hacks and translation patches and all that cool stuff for the Mega Drive. So if you've got any recommendations, let me know in the comments below and I can download some and put them on this and look forward to a video on this in the near future. I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can find for the system. Now for some special editions that I picked up. So first is Death Smiles 1 and 2 for the Switch. I was a big fan of Death Smiles when it first came out on the Xbox 360. So when I saw that Strictly Limited was releasing them as a bundle on the Switch with a really nice special edition with literally loads of extras that I haven't really even looked through yet, but there's all sorts of things in there. There's some postcards with some really nice artwork. There's a little wall scroll and I love the artwork for the game as well. Back at uni, I actually had a poster like this up on my wall all year. So that's really cool to have a wall scroll version. There's also some acrylic standees for some of the characters too, which is really nice. There's some other stuff I haven't even opened yet. There's some key rings in there. There's a pin badge that says Death Smiles. There's some more acrylic stands. I'll get all this out and have a look at it properly in the future. There's also a soundtrack on a CD, which is nice. Some arcade style flyers with the controls and things. There's some stickers in there. Told you there's a lot of stuff. A whole set of different postcards. A little poster there as well. And finally, the main thing, and I'll try and get this up on the wall at some point. 
It's not quite the same poster that I had back at uni, but there you go. If I stand back a bit, you can see it. There you go. There's a Death Smiles 2 one on the other side as well. So a really cool addition, but I just love both the games as well. So I'm really happy to have them on the Switch. And it's just cool to have all this extra merchandise and stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do with it all, but I am happy that I've got it. But that is nothing compared to the next special edition I've got. And I'm not going to be showing all the stuff for this one off in this video because I am saving it for a full review in the future. But let me go and grab the box. It's down there on the floor. Here it is. I can't remember how much this cost, but it did cost a lot. And I'm really happy to have it. So if you don't know, Clockwork Aquario was a game that was made by West One or Westone a long time ago, but it never actually got officially released. And then Strictly Limited and a few game developers actually got together and finished the game off. And now it is fully playable on the Switch. And I'm going to do a full video and show you everything that comes in this huge box here in the future. But I just haven't had chance to actually sit down and play the game for more than a few minutes yet. I've been so busy these past few months. So that is coming possibly by the end of the year. So subscribe if you want to see that video. Here's a sneak peek of one of the things that came with it. This was on the table. There's a load of other really cool stuff in there. I can't wait to show it all off. Something else cool that I got, this is the Switch OLED for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And at the time of recording, the game's not actually out yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I've actually got the dock and the Switch right here. So there it is. My first OLED Switch as well. I usually wait for a Pokemon Special Edition before I pick up any of Nintendo's like upgraded systems. So really glad to actually have a Switch OLED now and that's definitely going to be my main Switch going forward. Now if you remember earlier I mentioned Quintet and another thing came for that video and this is something that I've had on my watch list for a long time as well and I paid way too much money for this considering it is just a magazine. Especially considering the thing I wanted in particular from the magazine was just one page but either way I'm so glad to have it and it came in great condition and there it is, no more spoilers. But I did actually also enjoy just reading through the rest of the magazine and seeing what people were excited about in the mid 90s. It was a really great throwback. There's a load of really interesting stuff in the magazine and it seems like Game Fan itself was just a great magazine back in the day too. So maybe I'll download some issues onto my iPad to read in bed some nights. I do really enjoy reading through old gaming magazines. Does anyone else do that or is it just me? Now, the last thing I want to show in this video, and something that I haven't actually opened yet either, this is a homebrew game, this is The Shapeshifter 2, and if you remember, a few years ago now I did a review of the first one, and I thought it was okay, I thought it was pretty good for a Game Boy Adventure game, so let's open this up now, I've actually had this for about a month now, and I haven't had time to even open it up, so let's see what comes inside this really nice looking special edition. So. Wow, there's a load of really cool stuff actually. So first of all, I've run out of room on the desk. First of all, we have a little envelope with a certificate of authenticity. There you go, that's really cool to have. Oh yeah, I forgot this game comes on two cartridges, that'll be interesting. Here's the box, as you can see it is twice the thickness of a normal Game Boy game. And it also came with three identical little stickers, let's say Green Boy and a green boy keyring, a cool little collectible coin with a scene from the shapeshifter 2 on one side and a little green boy logo guy on the other and a pin badge as well there you go and there's a pin badge and let's see what the cartridges look like and i will be doing a review of this soon maybe after next week because things might calm down a bit then but i've been so busy i got a new job and then it's been back to back expos since since the start of last month basically there we go so there it is without its protective sleeve on and now let's see what the cartridges look like inside and see whether there's anything else cool in there too that's pretty interesting so it actually comes in two layers as you can see there with a bit of cardboard separating them there's even more stickers in there so there's another two of those little green boy stickers there's a guidebook for if you get lost in the game there's also an instruction booklet here's one of the cartridges this is cartridge two Really nice, high quality print on the label. And then this one must be the first one. And that's the other thing that I knew was included as well. So it's also got this code wheel where I guess, depending on where you are in the game, you'll need to turn this round and solve certain puzzles. So looking forward to seeing what that's all about. 
and there it is. There's the first cartridge. So I think that's it for this episode. There was more stuff, but I'll probably leave that for the next one now because it is getting really late. I haven't really had a chance to record this one until now. And I'm very tired, so hopefully this video has been okay to watch. I haven't seemed too out of it, although I do feel it. So thank you so much if you stuck with me to the end of this episode. Please subscribe. Please consider checking out Patreon so you can support me and support these videos going forward. Really hope you're looking forward to all of the videos that I mentioned in this episode. Hopefully I've got a bit more time to work on them in the future. Anyway, that's it for now. I've got a lot to go away and play on. I'm really looking forward to playing Pokemon tomorrow. So thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what games you've picked up recently or what games you're playing recently. And I'll see you all very soon for the next episode. Goodbye.